In this series of videos on procedures for managing temporary layoff and redundancies, I'm going to focus this video on what to do in a redundancy situation. While I've touched on the area of redundancies in a separate video, I now want to go into more detail and step you through the key information you'll need as an employer. The option to make positions redundant will hopefully be a last resort, but if this occurs, Remember, it is the job that no longer exists within the business, for example, due to business closures, for example, in the pub industry. So what that means is the role is no longer acquired by the business, so a termination of employment is going to occur. Remember, it is the position, not the person you are making redundant. When a number of employees are being made redundant within a 30-day period, this is known as a collective redundancy which arises where during any period of 30 consecutive days, the employees are being made redundant as follows. So five employees where there are 21 to 49 employees, 10 employees where there is 50 to 99 employees, or 10% of the employees where there's over 100 up to 299, or 30 employees where there's 300 or more employees. In a, such a situation, under the Protection of Employment Acts, your employer is obliged to enter into consultations with a view to agreement with the representatives. This legislation is separate from the Redundancy Payments Act. The consultations you as an employer must have must take place at the earliest opportunity and at least 30 days before the notice of redundancy is given. The aim of the consultation is to consider whether there is any alternative to the redundancy and to discuss the terms of same. The employer is also obliged to provide the following information in writing to employees when a redundancy occurs. So the reason for the redundancy, which is business closure potentially due to the coronavirus, the number and description of the employees affected, the number and description of the employees normally employed, the period in which the redundancies will happen and the criteria for selection of employees for redundancy and the method of calculating any redundancy payment. The employer is also obliged to inform the minister in writing of the proposed redundancies at least 30 days before they occur. SI 140 1997 sets out the information the employer must provide to the minister. The Employees Provision of Information and Consultation Act requires employers to consult with employees on substantial changes in the workplace, including proposals for collective redundancies. The Act applies to employers with 50 people or more. Remember also, as an employer, you must give the employee notice of redundancy. The employee is entitled to a minimum of two weeks written notice of redundancy. This notice period goes up depending on their period of service. So notice when on layoff or short time is as follows. If the employee has been put on layoff or put on short time, this means that the employee's contract of employment is temporarily suspended. If you decide to then make the position redundant, you must give them their full notice period. The employee is also entitled to any holidays that are outstanding or payment in lieu of holidays. Remember, for many, it will be their first time having to be in this position of redundancy, so it's new and difficult for both employers and employees, so be kind, compassionate and patient at this time. Remember, you must communicate the reason for this step, i.e. the coronavirus in this case, and after you talk to the employee, the employee will be notified of this in writing by you. To be eligible for a redundancy payment, you must meet the following requirements as an employee. So the employee must be aged 16 or over. There is no upper limit of 66 like there used to be before. You must be in employment that is insurable under the Social Welfare Acts. Full-time employees under the age of 66 must be paying Class A PRSI. This insurability requirement does not apply to part-time workers. You must have continuously worked for your employer for 104 weeks. And in deciding whether the employee has continuously worked for the two years, the following situations will not break continuity of service. So they include an employee who is on maternity leave, paternity leave, adoptive leave, parental leave or carer's leave. Or if they were off work due to illness, agreed absence, holidays or layoff. 
the payment the employees will receive from you in relation to redundancy payment is two weeks wages per year of service and a bonus week. On the date of termination of employment, they receive this payment. If you can't pay the redundancy amount, the employer should follow the steps below. Complete and submit the RP50 form online. Print a copy of the completed form and get the employer and employee to sign it. So post the signed form to the redundancy and insolvency section of the DSP. And also remember with the form, you need a letter from your accountant or solicitor stating that you are unable to pay the redundancy amount that's due and accept liability for the lump sum owing to the social insurance fund. Documentary evidence such as audited accounts should also be included. If a layoff or short time situation exists and has continued for four weeks or more or for six weeks in the last 13 weeks, an employee may give their employer a notice in writing of their intention to claim redundancy under the legislation. Unless you give the employee a counter notice within seven days of their notice stating that within four weeks of the date of their claim for redundancy, it will be possible to offer the employee not less than 13 weeks work without layoff or short time. We have been lobbying the government to change this and the good news is it worked. The government has confirmed that it has now paused the clause that allows employees to claim redundancy during layoff until the 21st of May and the government will review that again then. Remember this is a termination of employment so tread carefully and follow the guidelines correctly and compassionately. In summary the key actions for you to take are number one communicate the decision with your staff and the reason for this decision compassionately. Number two Ensure it is the position, not the person you're making redundant and you can objectively justify your selection criteria. And number three, follow the correct legal process for the redundancy and keep a detailed paper trail of this. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this useful.